What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we finally have the Master League Battle of Spice. Now there are only 8 submissions this time around, so I'm actually going to include every single battle, and for the most part everyone is running level 50 Pokemon, there is the odd slightly under level Pokemon here and there, and there is definitely one team which I'll point out when we get to it, that is just running level 40 Pokemon, but after the feedback from the trainer that missed out from the recent Ultra League Battle of Spice video, I've decided since I didn't specifically state in the submissions form that I want to see fully powered up Pokemon, I will let this slide but in future if you can power pokemon up as close to level 50 as possible then i'm more likely to include your submission in the video but anyways i also want to say huge respect to these trainers because even i don't really invest in any spice picks for the master league so please show your support by leaving a like on the video and with that being said let's get into the question of the day how many pokemon do you have built for each individual league so for the great league the ultra league and master league and maybe even the little cup as well if you've got many pokemon built for it but just let me know in the comments section down below. Just quickly before we get into the battles, I want to give a shout out to FootballFan1449 as well as Colin L for their gifted memberships and donations in my recent live stream. It is very much appreciated, so thank you to both of you. But with that being said, let's finally get into the battles. Alright, setting into the first battle, Chandelure into Dialga, so not an amazing matchup for us, but definitely where we want to see it with this team. The opponent's going to say swap into Kyogre, and we can hard punish them with a Shadow Exeggutor. But I say hard punish, honestly, this Surf's going to do quite a lot of damage. It already gets us into the other health range. We are running Bullet Seed, so pretty fast to spam these charge moves. Going to go for the Seed Bomb, grab a shield there, and we make it to Seed Bomb number two. But you can see, they will just be able to fully waterfall farm us down at this point. But luckily for us, the opponent actually doesn't commit to that farm down there. They definitely could have got it and come out with a lot of energy which might have threatened our Kingdra, but now we can come in, and like Palkia, we are going to double resist the waterfall damage here, so I wouldn't be surprised if we go for a full Dragon Breath farm down. The opponent does make it to a last second charge move here. I've not been counting. We're going to shield. Respect the damage. It is just a Surf, which is double resisted, but that's okay. We're now going to fire for an Outrage here into Dialga. That does big damage. We swap into Chandelure, and they've got a Groudon in the back, but they don't have any shields, and we're running Poltergeist. So we're full sending it here, and it one-shots the Groudon there from nearly full health. We can see as well we need to charge our phone, but it doesn't matter. We've got enough battery to last us this battle. All we have to do, shield up the Iron Head, go straight for the Flame Charge, and of course, from this range, Flame Charge will be taken out Dialga, and we're able to take that game. So going into the next battle, we've got a triple fighting team in the Master League. So I just mentioned, you're not going to see many fighters in the Master League. Well, we're now seeing three of them here as we lead with Annihilate. Probably the one you're most likely to see, but either way, still not particularly common. We're now going to swap into Pangoro as, of course, we go for a... Well, we go for a close combat there, of course. We could have been running Ice Punch, so definitely makes makes sense as to why the opponent shielded. We're now going to let the next move go through here. We're running a pretty interesting move set with Rock Side there, maybe for coverage up against Ho-Oh. But either way, we go for the close combat, dealing big damage, but they're able to fully Dragon Tail farm us down there. Since we were quad debuffed in our defense at that point, we can come back in with Annihilate, and from this range, we get the counter farm down. They're going to come in with a Necrozma, and we're going straight for Shadow Ball. We've revealed close combat, but we're full sending Shadow Ball, and that does huge damage. The opponent does not expect it. But they're going to come in with Ursa Luna. And despite the fact that we're a fighting type up against a normal type Pokemon, we've got Shadow Claw as the fast move and superpower. Each time we throw it is going to drop our defense and our attack by one stage. So not actually that ideal for us. We're now going to fire off the next superpower. At this point, even double debuffed unless they go for a high horsepower here. We should just barely live an elemental punch. So we can now fire off another superpower. Superpower with the double debuff actually doesn't get the KO there, but it doesn't make a difference. They will get off a last second charge move but that's okay we shoot up the ice punch and we should be able to go for a full counter farm down up against necrozma and we're able to take that game into next battle, we've got Gardevoir up against the Rude, so this is a great matchup. They're going to swap into a Ho-Oh, and we're able to respond with Gyarados. Now, unfortunately, they are just barely able to outpace us to the charge move. They full send the Brave Bird there. They drop their defense, though, and we can make it to the Aquatel. Aquatel is going to be no shielded, and that's perfect because that allows us to maintain alignment whilst also giving very little farm for the opponent. So, honestly, the opponent probably should have fought for switch advantage there, but either way, we can now come in with our Bishop here. We will 
will resist everything they can throw unless they're running thunder, which is quite unlikely. But the opponent makes a brilliant catch there, catching a resisted Dark Pulse onto Zarude. We're now going to swap back into Gardevoir. I think, of course, Iron Head going to do more damage than anything from Zarude. So going to no shield. They go for the Power Whip, although that will actually put us into Dragon Breath Farm Down range, which isn't ideal. We're only making it to one charge move. So typically, I would say, yes, go for the harder hitting move. But in this case, we got Triple Axel. We could have got off two boosted charms there, and maybe that would have made this more comfortable. But either way, I think we're fine here. We've got two shields. Might as well just start shielding here. And even though we are resisting all the movesets from this Dialga, it's still chunking quite a bit. So just play it safe. Go for the Dark Pulse here. And if they make it to one final charge move, just use a shield here. We're thinking about it. Yep, definitely use the shield there. We can now fire off a Dark Pulse. And from this range, there should be enough damage to... Actually, it actually barely doesn't get the KO there, but one more Snarl does the job. We take out Dialga, and we're able to take that game. But into the next battle, Nightmare lead, leading with a Shadow Alakazam into Necrozna, but we do have two Dark Types in the back, so we swap into Tyranitar, unfortunately baiting out a Kyogre. This is definitely not a good matchup, but we grab a Shield Advantage, and we're actually going to double shield here, as we will just barely make it to a second crunch. From this range, crunch probably doesn't quite take them out there, but I'm, honestly, I'm pretty unfamiliar with the matchups in the Master League, so maybe that would have KO'd. Either way, we grab the final shield. We also drop their defense, so going to be a slightly easier counter farm down. And when we come out of this matchup, we have the Shadow Ball loaded. Oh, I thought we were going to throw it straight away. I'm almost certain that would one-shot Necrozma because it's double weak to the Ghost Typing. But we swap instead into our Obstagoon, go for a Night Sash, and they're actually staying in here. The opponent goes for a triple resisted Moon Guys Beam. What on earth are you doing, opponent? They must have something super weak to Obstagoon in the back. So either way, we go for the Night Sash, number two, and there it is. They've got Mewtwo, and the fact that they stayed in there, and the fact they're just going straight for a Psy Strike probably means they're running Psy Strike and Shadow Ball. So unfortunate for them, but they are completely core broken by the Obstagoon. We go for the Night Sash, and remember, we had the Shadow Ball landed. I wanted to see it land earlier. Sorry, loaded. And now we see it land. Wow, I can't even talk right now. Either way, Shadow Ball gets the KO up against the Mewtwo, and we're able to take that game. Into next battle, going to see a dark right up against Necrozma, and we throw off the four snarls, which typically isn't good timing, but it looked like it was there. So I don't know if the opponent lagged slightly, but either way, we're now going to get a full snarl in for free. As the opponent goes, what a sun still strike there. That would pretty much KO us, or probably would KO us, honestly. Dark Ride is very glassy. We're going to come in with Machamp. They are running Mod Shot, and they go for an Earth Power. They're definitely not going to be able to KO us with just fast move damage now, so they're going to have to throw another Charge Move. We go for Cross Shot, which actually does some decent damage there. I think this might be the first time I've seen Machamp in the Master League since Cross Shot did get a buff to its damage. It still doesn't hit that hard, but two Cross Shots with the counter damage does actually take out the Garchomp. Unfortunately, we lagged there. I'm not sure if we would have made it to a Charge Move anyways, but we come back in with the dark cry going for the dark pulse grabbing that final shield and the opponent actually wasn't at the charge move there they're now throwing we get another full snarl in for free and once again opponent core broken by a pokemon that is the dark typing as they've got necrozma and mewtwo but they're running thunderbolt for coverage which is very interesting honestly we could have gone for one more snarl and just gone for double dark pulses there but instead we swap into our gudra i'm not really sure i agree with this but either way i'm gonna go for an aqua here and we're actually stuttering so bad that we don't even hit an excellent and that is quite frustrating because i'm not sure if we can go for a full snarl farm down here either way we go for the extra snarl they swap back into necrozma that is a good play there because shadow core going to do more damage than the psycho cuts but unfortunately just barely not enough damage for the opponent as we make it to back to back dark pulses the second one takes out the mewtwo and we're able to take that game into next battle, we see Garchomp in the lead up against Alandris. We're going to swap and catch a resisted Sandseer Storm, which is, of course, going to drop our attack, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. They're actually seemingly core broken by a Bomber Snow here, so we're now going to go and fire off an, a Weather Ball. Unfortunately, that doesn't do much damage since they have dropped our attack, but still, we are resisting the fast move damage coming from Zarude. They're going to let the next move go through. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we shield this and then just keep, keep on over farming in this matchup here. Never mind, we're going to 
to fire off the charge you straight away, but we are killing the switch clock here, so we are now able to swap out, and we're going to swap and catch the move onto Tyranitar. Brilliant catch there as they go for a Dark Pulse, which is resisted. They come back in with Landorus. Tyranitar fairly bulky, so we can live this reasonably well, and then we will be able to make it to a Brutal Swing just before they make it to the next charge move, although if they want to, they can just shield this and then fully farm us down, but either way, that's fine with us. They get a huge farm down, but I think we just come in with the Garchomp, sponge the energy, and then swap back into our Bomber Snow. So, at this point, gonna no shield this, I assume, and we are gonna no shield, and they are going to throw the next move straight away, so definitely no shield once again. As so they go for another Sansei Storm, we swap into our Bomber Snow, and the opponent swaps at the same time. We get the full Powder Snow farm down, and now they're coming in with an Excadrill. So, of course, another Ground-type Pokemon would have just been neutral to the Weather Ball damage, but either way, a Bomber Snow should still be fine here. We've got quite a significant energy advantage. Two more Weather Balls with the Powder Snow damage should be enough to get the KO here. And then, of course, that Landorus is very low, so we go for the Weather Ball number two. We we can now go and fire off Weather Ball number three. Remember, we still got a charge move on our guard jump just in case we need it. But it doesn't look like it as we make it to a third Weather Ball in time. And Weather Ball from this range easily takes out the Landorus. And we're able to take that game. So going into the next battle, we are running Bertic in the lead, and this is the team that is just level 40, I believe. They're going to swap into Ho-Oh, and we come in with Reuniclus. I have no clue what hidden power we're running here, and it is incredibly slow to generate en energy, but the opponent, for whatever reason, looks like they're going for a full incinerate farm down here, and unfortunately, they will get a huge farm down, but they were at 100 energy like five fast moves ago, so doesn't really matter too much and the opponent is still going for extra incinerates what are you doing opponent throw your energy but now we can fire off the surf there and they're still going for incinerates opponent just throw your energy because now we can actually outpace them to the next charge move because they can never store back to back so huge mistake on the opponent's end there they probably wasted like over 200 energy probably even more than that like 300 energy i wouldn't be surprised and then they come in with landorus of all pokemon a pokemon double weak to ice and they've got dialga in the back which we saw in the lead and we've got Golurk and a shield so this will be game over despite the fact that this Golurk is probably only level 40 we can just safely shield this up go straight for the earth power and from this range earth power will be taken out dialga and we're able to take that game so definitely one of the strangest battles I've ever seen. But into the final battle of this video, leading with Nihiligo into Xerneas. Great lead, and the opponent comes in with their own spice as they're running Bishop as well. But we can shield this up here. Probably go for a full incinerate farm down now as they throw it on very poor timing. And we will get a huge farm down there coming out with 100 energy. We go for the extra incinerate once again. We didn't really need to do that, but we are throwing on good timing. So I guess not the end of the world, but definitely not necessary. Either way, gonna fire off another Shadow Ball here. Shadow Ball is going to connect there and the opponent is going to fire off a charge move. Now we're actually going to shield here unless they're running Thunder which is pretty unlikely. I think the typical move set is going to be Moonblast and Close Combat. Then of course both of those moves would have been resisted so I personally wouldn't have shielded that. But either way we're now going to come in with Executor and we need to live a charge move here. But Moon Guys Beam hits incredibly hard but they for whatever reason just settle for a Dark Pulse there. Maybe I don't know, either overestimating or underestimating the health of Executor, either thinking they need two charge moves to KO, or they just thought, like, uh, one Dark Pulse would KO there anyways. But either way, we're going to come in with Nihiligo, go for the Rock Side. Rock Side grabs the shield from the opponent, and Nihiligo is definitely a lot bulkier than Executor. So the opponent fires off the Moon Guys Beam. We just barely hang on. We swap into Scalar Dirge, and we make it to Disarming Voice. Of course, we also made it to a Shadow Ball, but either way, from this range, it gets the KO, and we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day